When we think of the world's smallest country, the Vatican should come to mind. But here in this corner of Toronto, the tiny neighbourhood of Rathnelly could have been it at one time. You see, a campaign was launched in the 60s for this area to become a republic. It was driven in part by jest, but also by serious purpose. Pim Bountenhouse, the co-president of the local neighbourhood association, has walked these streets for most of her life. Her love of Rathnelly is almost infectious. I kind of want to be taken out here in a box. I don't want to leave. <laughs> it's a great, great place to live. The neighbourhood dates back to the late 1800s. Sir William McMaster, a senator and founder of CIBC, built his home here. He named the area Rathnelly after his birthplace in Ireland. There's a long history of people being very involved. Such as building an archway on Avenue Road to welcome home soldiers from the First World War, but it was proposals in the mid to late 1960s to build the Crosstown Expressway roughly where DuPont is and the Spadina Expressway to the west that brought folks together in a bigger way. We would have been an off-ramp for essentially the Gardner Expressway in Midtown. Everyone was down at City Hall protesting. It was huge. We were as I was a little kid then. We were all had pins, we marched off to the downtown. Around the same time, a small park beside the high-level pumping station, kept exclusively for city workers, became a tipping point. We got 250 houses here who don't have access to green space. We broke through the gates and took over the park, sent a very funny letter to Pierre Trudeau, the then uh, Prime Minister, saying we're going to declare war against Canada if we don't let us have access to this park. A CBC journalist reported how residents demanded $123.69 in foreign aid money. This is for playground equipment for the, for the park, for our, um, our area over here, which has been illegally seized from us. Neighbours here actually got a letter from the Prime Minister's office. It apparently said, Please don't launch a, a war against Canada because we will surely lose because your hearts are pure. It's an amazing letter. I can't imagine a politician wanting to say something like that. Bountenhouse said a push to secede from Canada was born, calling it funky, funny, hysterical campaign to, to drum up attention to what the impact of these major decisions the city was making. They even went so far as naming a queen, drafting a constitution, writing an anthem called Rathnelly the Brave, and developing a coat of arms. Area Councillor Josh Matlow describes the extent of the campaign for independence. There were passports handed out to the neighbours. There was an air force put together by kids on bikes. Young, quote-unquote, troops could be seen at the ready. Charge! The kids here literally led the charge in the name of fun. There have been across Avenue Road tug-of-wars with the adjacent neighborhood. Um, there is a real culture of creativity, playfulness, and rebellion uh, that really brings the community together. Now, obviously, Rathnelly is still part of Canada, but it all sparks something special for decades to come, such as shutting down Rathnelly Avenue every couple of years and filling it with dining tables for a big meal, followed by dancing. We had all these festivals, all these celebrations. It was a very, very lovely place to grow up, and people really, really took care of each other, and that has carried on to this day. Walk the streets of Rathnelly today, it's not hard to see renovated homes and pristine properties. But look closer, the history of the people is preserved as much as the buildings. Take the corner of Rathnelly and McMaster Avenues, named after the Hardys. It was like this marvelous little moment where one family owned both houses on the same corner. So we decided to commemorate the, that sort of silly fact. Using development money given to the city, Matlow went to council to get street signs recognizing the Republic and its residents. They're proud Canadians, but they're very proud to be citizens of the Republic of Rathnelly because that defines their sense of character, their sense of identity, and their sense of, of, of being a tight-knit community. And that's really what it comes down to. In the sign graphics, six martini glasses as a tribute to Eileen Robertson. She was named the first queen of Rathnelly. A laneway was named after her too. She was a great, great, great human being and stood up for the Republic long, long after she needed to. She was incredible and she would come out at every, every community event. In fact, all the laneways here are named after people and important moments in Rathnelly's history. Robin Fraser, he wrote our constitution. He was a lawyer who lived up at 33 Rathnelly. Michael Snow Lane, a fantastic artist, he died just a couple of weeks ago. Stop Spadina Lane, which of course is memorializing the efforts to stop the Spine Expressway. And then there's Rebellion Lane, which is really just trying to kind of embed this idea 
idea that to get what you need, you have to fight. The activism hasn't stopped. Bouton House is one of many focused on an idea to bring Avenue Road back in time, making it more pedestrian friendly and less like what she calls a de facto Spadina Expressway. It's awful. The sidewalks are very narrow. The salt sprays up from the street. It's dangerous even crossing the road. Cyclists regularly get hit. Pedestrians get hit. And fighting back against large-scale developments. We're not against the idea of development. Just make it at the right scale. If you start loading it up with people who have no connection to the area, it's going to be much harder to sustain a sense of community. Meanwhile, Bouton House and Matlow have messages for all. If you're the kind of person who turns out their lights at Halloween and doesn't want kids to come by, don't move to Rathnelly because we have hundreds of kids, lots of people. It's very, very vibrant and we ask that everybody be involved and really care. So that's what makes it a very special place. Long live the Republic and long live Canada. We don't have border restrictions. We welcome uh, everyone in Toronto and in Canada to visit us, to play in our parks, to, uh, to join us in our celebrations. But we also expect that the government of Canada will continue supporting our efforts to uh, provide a great quality of life for our citizens. For more on this fascinating neighborhood, head to citynews.ca. In the Republic of Rathnally, Nick Westall, City News.